guys and welcome to the second round of the 2011 GP4 GP2 OC Championship. I'm JWF1 and we are here at the famous circuit de Barcelona Catalunya here in Spain for the second round of the GP2 Championship here in 2011. Last time out Bruno de Varas won the race and obviously took an early lead in the championship. But let's have a look at the grid for today's race. It is Richard Johnson on pole position with Franco Lopez in the dams in second place. Bruno de Barros, last week's winner is in third with Franco Gamba in fourth position also in the dams just two places away from his teammate. Scott Roush starts in fifth with Kurashima De Rosa starting in sixth place for the Arden team. Zachary Fitzwater starts 17th in the in the racing engineering car. Alongside him is Patrick Uhaz, who starts in 8th place. Phil Sadlowski starts in 9th with Jordan Dixon in the car lane starting in 10th position. He rounds out the top 10 for today's race. Lorenzo Morchula starts 11th with Oliver Glazebrook just outside the top 10 in 12th position in the Lotus liveried car. It's then Robert Hunter who starts 13th position, one place behind Oliver Glazebrook. In 14th position we have David Greenwood, three places away from his teammate. 15th is Tan Daniel Prezigola, alongside him is Gabriel Gomez in the Trident. 17th goes to Sasha Banks. In 18th position we have Jeffrey Fingai, a disappointing qualifying session for him in the Supernova. On row 10 we have Joel Dyer who starts 19th and alongside him is Vendron Fadrina who starts in 20th position for Racing Engineering. And on the back row of the grid we have William Brock who starts in 21st. And in fact the, the back row is full of Williams, William Brock 21st and William Duncan all the way down in last. A disappointing qualifying session for the American starting in 22nd. We have 20 laps in front of us here in Barcelona. The weather is raining for this race so it could be very quite an interesting race and hope and maybe we could expect some aquaplaning we're on the grid now then as we wait for those five red lights to go off to signify the start of this race here in catalonia the gp2 race 20 laps in front of us we have one light two lights three lights four lights five lights and it is go for the second round of the 2011 season. A good start from the front two. Looks like Johnson's got a better start than Lopez, but at the same time on the background lock, Bruno de Barros has also had a good start as well. In fact, de Barros is trying to challenge for the lead from Johnson as they all sprint down towards turn one, two and three on the track. Is there going to be any collisions due to the standing water? Johnson just hangs at it around the outside from the Barros there. And in the background lock, we've got some crashing going on in the back. A lot of debris flying off from people there, but it's Johnson who's leading the pack. It'll be very interesting to see who the guys involved in that collision. It looks like Padrina might have been one of them, considering that he's dropped down the pecking field, and maybe Brock as well, but at the same time, he's just moved up the position. Devouts had a little look there, going through into turn three there, but couldn't quite make the move stick as it all spent around the right-hander, and somebody's lost the rear wing there, and the front wing, and uh, it, it looks like Greenwood's lost the front wing in the place of the right. Let's have a look. So he's right on board. David Greenwood now there is ahead with the turn one, two guns coming either side of him there. One of them has been appeared with like drop. And oh, looks like a concertina effect's happened in front of Greenwood there. And uh, well, it looks like Duncan lost the front wing there. And he's not caught up in that as well, did the American. Misjudge is breaking there. And well, it was actually him that caused the incident as well. He hit the back of one of the Virgin cars there. And as a result, it caused the concertina effect in front as a result of that and already some people are going to have to make a trip to the pits at the end of that then. So at the end of that one then it's Johnson who leads the pack closely followed by DeBowers who's in second place there who's 0.436 back. So Johnson pulling a little bit of a gap as DeBowers at the same time setting the fastest lap of 139.142. I believe that's said as they're also followed by Garbo who rounds up the top three there. They all sprint down towards turn one. Looks like Fitzwater defender from DeRosa as they go through into turn one as the Jill in the meantime holding off the Bowers' threat to the moment still closely following behind the moment now the Bowers on lap 3 now looking to the inside but again Johnson essentially parking the bus to turn 1 but he's missed the apex that could bring the Bowers back into it as they now go around turn 3 Brock now sitting the fastest lap at 134.154 as they now go Around the right hander, can De Barros potentially find a way pass into turn four? He looks to the inside. Can De Barros get the job done? No. Johnson just breaking that a little bit later to keep on the fourth. And at the same time, Roush defends you has to keep hold of fourth place there. As we now head in towards the chicane on the track now and then. Down towards the left and right hand on the track we go now then. As they now go around there, out of the corner we go now then. Heading towards the final corner. And is De Barros going to get the position of Johnson at the same time? 
Uh, looks like Garmba is trying to keep up with them in the Red Bull car. I believe it's Garmba in the background. It is one of the Italians and it is Frank Garmba. As we now go, Danny inside goes Bruno De Palos. Can he get the job done? on Johnson as they now go down towards the first corner. Can De Palos get that a little bit later on the brace? Johnson trying to hang in the rally outside of all of his skill and he keeps all the lead there. De Palos just still stuck behind him as you has. Looks like he's taking four from Roush down side by side they go and you has takes four from Roush there. Now Lopez wants to keep the grab of, uh, of uh, Roush himself as now Garma gets into the battle for the lead there behind De Palos and Johnson in towards the chicane again now then. De Palos again ready to attack um, Johnson in front, can he finally manage to take the league as he tries to make it two wins out of two Will is the young Brazilian as they now come down the pitch straight now, they tucks into the slipstream of Johnson, he looks to the inside line there, Johnson doesn't even think about defending, going through to turn one, can Tabas this time get that little bit later on the brakes and Johnson, Danny inside it goes and again Johnson just able to hang it around the outside, Garmba just looking for any opportunity there, and a little bit far back as Lopez takes fifth from Roush there as they go through to turn one, so Lopez now gets into the top five and now Garmba all over the back side of Bruno Tabas getting the job done, but at the same time Tabas having a look again on Johnson, but Johnson just that little bit too far in front, they went through to turn four there. Garber, well, he's just not had an opportunity yet to make a pass on the top two. And, uh, well, that's that really as far as they're concerned. Now, as he goes sprinting around the Casa corner, I believe it's called. No, Cass is down there. In fact, it's actually turn number, I believe it's turn number uh, eight. When he's going around there. Johnson went defensive with the balance there. Meantime, Fitzwater now looking to the inside of Roush himself. Roush seems to be going backwards all of a sudden. But Roush on that occasion just hangs it around the outside from Fitzwater. Keep all the seventh of sixth place and now De Rosa back on the prowl of Fitzwater and he's even got something out behind him as well. He wants a piece of the action as he now goes down to the game. Looks like Lopez is starting to close up on the uh, fourth place man. Uh, trying to remember who it is in fourth place and uh, I can't quite remember who it was, I'm afraid. I do apologize, I can't quite tell who it was. As now they go down the pitch deck now, they can to power get hold of Johnson this time. Johnson's been a pain for the Brazilian throughout the beginning of this race. Now Lopez is back to back to power. Looking to the inside of Johnson. Can he finally get the job done as he goes down towards turn one? And again, the not able to get loose on the break compared to Johnson. Garma back on the floor as well. He do have that bit. He likes to start to close on top as well. So essentially, Johnson could be forming his own crew if it stays like this. And uh, if he keeps this up, I should say, it's out the power standing inside. And again, Johnson is so good at just hanging around the outside. He needs to have a lot more confidence in the car than what the Bowers has so far. Now on lap 8 of 20, to Bowers this time, getting alongside quite a little bit early. But again, Johnson just shuts the door down. Now you has having a little look at Garba for third. But Garba shutting the door as they went through into there. And it's also bought Lopez now into that fight. So now, essentially, we've got a five car scrap for the lead. And Roush goes off the track. Can he keep it out of the wall? He does so there, but he's now outside of the points. A lot of people getting on that, and now will he fall to the back of the pack as a result of that? As he's now waiting for a gap in the traffic just to get himself back on the road. But has he beached the car? Because he is on gravel. No, he hasn't. Roush rejoins in 18th there from the fellow compatriot, William Duncan. Is now De Bowers flips it back to the inside. There's a nice little dummy, and at long last, Bruno De Bowers gets in front of Johnson and De Bowers takes the lead of this race. Let's have a look then. Just to see this cracking lead there. So he took up. He looks to the right. He sees that Johnson shut the door, but he flips back to the left hand side. Brilliant tactical work there from Bruno De Bowers. Switches back to the inside and uh, definitely plays mind games on Johnson to finally take the lead. As we've got a spinner, it's Brock who spun off. And uh, well, there's just enough space for cars to get around him there as Brock is waiting for a gap in the traffic. There goes uh, Roush who finally makes his way up through the field at last. And then uh, Brock is now down to 18 as a result. And uh, well, as I look there to see what happens, Brock was having a look. I believe that might be the team. It's another blue car. And he hits the back of. Uh, can't quite tell who it is. It was Gomez who he hit the back side of there. And uh, well, that's that really. That's uh, Brock's race. And now Lopez now looks to the inside of Juhas. Can he finally take fourth? from the Hungarian and yes he can up into fourth place goes the Argentinian of Franco Lopez and now can he set his sights on the other Franco that being Franco Garba and uh, for the final playing position but at the same time he's now down the inside of Johnson can Garba get up into second place he gets alongside the Italian and Johnson's off he's run out of road there Johnson just trying his best to keep it around the outside but he's just run out of road carrying that little bit too much speed and a chance for him for a podium this race has gone up down the has gone down the toilet essentially 
and he's now going to be dropping to the back of the pack as he actually beats the car as well. Gamba and Lopez now find themselves gaining a the position. In fact, anybody who is behind Johnson has now gained a position. Gamba with second, Lopez up into third place. Now Lopez trying to chase down Gamba for second place in this race. And Johnson, has he beached the car or is he just waiting for a gap in the traffic? There is a gap in the traffic and I think Johnson might have beached the car and he has a marshal has come out to his aid and Johnson out of this race. What a shame, the man who took pole position now finds himself out of the race. And as you can see there, look, he's got a little bit of understeer there, looks like he's got standing water. And as you can see there, Danny inside went down, but Johnson just leaving that little bit too much room, didn't even keep an arm what was going on on the track. And as a result, just went off track. And uh, well, that's race over for the German. But now we come down the straight line, and Lopez now started to attack Gamba for second, and even breaking you has into this fight as well. Down the pit straight we go. Gamba again defending the inside, can feel the pressure of Lopez, who's just all over his backside at the moment. As I go around turn two, and now approaching turn three on the track now, then is uh, Lopez ready to attack Gamba this time around now then as he all head down towards turn two on the track Lopez looks to the inside of Gamba can he get the job done on the Italian and ooh look like Gamba just chopped across him there and uh, wow what can you say about that then really it's uh, look like he nearly chopped Lopez's nose off as the bounce position in the race and another guy goes off the track this time it's Jeffrey Fingai who goes off the track now then that's the third person who's gone off at that point but luckily for him he hasn't lost the, hasn't lost the position well not yet at least because fellow could battery at Roush he started to get on to it for 15th place he's preparing to make a move there now it's turn 15 let's have a look and see what Jeffrey Fingai did as he goes through into this corner and it just looks like he's caught a wet patch and goes off the track luckily for him uh, Roush was a little bit too further back for him to make a pass on Fingai. Like, Roush now finds himself behind Fellow Compatriot. And another Fellow Compatriot. Gamba's off. Lopez is up to second. Did Lopez and Gamba make contact? Gamba's down to fifth. As a result, let's have a look. So we ride up forward. Lopez he looks the inside there. And Gamba just defended late. Nothing that Lopez could have done. And uh, well, I'm afraid that looked like Gamba's fault, to be honest with you. Yeah, he just uh, jumped across Lopez's line quite late and pretty much caused his own incident. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Are you? That's now, of course, Gamba podium. Lopez now up to second, and he's leaving you hands back for dust. It's now down the inside. Goes from guy on Brock. Brock nearly. There was contact nearly made between the two, and again going through that corner. Can Brock get the position off Fingai this time? No, Fingai just able to hang it around his eyes and keep hold of 16th place there. As a result, we're now on lap 12 or 20. The Barros has a healthy lead in front of Lopez at the moment. He's having to fend off from a couple of cars behind him. As they now go swooping around turn two, as we get a yellow flag down at uh, at turn number six, and it is Machulo. Lorenzo Machulo has gone for a spin down at turn six, and uh, well, that's that really. Machulo was having a really tough race anyway, down in ninth, and uh, well, wasn't getting on, getting close to the point. Uh, trying to defend the inside as he was battling with a couple of cars and just caught it on the wet patch and went spinning at turn six there. So. Uh, yeah, well, a shame for that, really. Uh, about the F1 guys will look at it later on that uh, they won't be having uh, wet conditions because it will dry up before the uh, before the start of their race. And uh, well, that's that really is now. Here comes Sasha Banks all over the backside of uh, I want to say this is Gomez. She's on the backside of who spun off a little bit earlier on thanks to contact with I believe it was Rock, I think. And uh, well, nearly went off the track there, did Banks. Lucky kept it going there, but couldn't quite find, find a way past thanks to the fact that to Brock the inside of the So who was it then? But either way, Brock now down the inside of Roush. Can he take 15 from him there as I go around the uh, through the uh, this section of the course? And no, he can't. Uh, great drive from the pair of them, but uh, it looked like um, uh, I think it is uh, Roush who just took his ground there. And we'll now look at Lopez. And I think Lopez might be actually catching up to the bar. I think he has enough time on him. I'm not 100% sure as we go through the turn two there, trying to put as much turn in as you can. Meantime, it's Glazebrook who's currently holding on to the point position. His teammate wants none of that at the moment as he wants the, the final point position himself. Please, I go there having an attack on Oliver Glazebrook for the final point position as they now go around. The right hander is Glazebrook going to hold off Prezi Gola this time around now. And then as I go down the straight, he's got a yellow flag down into turn one. Who is that? And it's Banks. Banks has gone for a spin down at turn one. What has happened to Banks then as well? So she was battling with the, with the guy that she was battling with for quite a while and hit the back of uh, it was William Duncan. In fact, I think he was having about a with Duncan defended 
and it's kind of 50-50 there on whose fault it was. So uh, I don't know if any of you guys are opinion that. We're on the final lap of the race, and you can see how much Lopez has caught up on this lap. I don't know if Lopez has enough time to catch up, but there's just a, a bit of a gap for him to get within slipstream range and pass Bruno de Bowers for the lead of this race. But we are on the final lap of the race. Can de Bowers just hold on to take to take two wins out of two in this race? He's doing a good job of the road and just holding off the nerve of Lopez of the marriage. It's nine tenths between the pair of them, so it is under a second between de Bowers and Lopez. Lopez trying to get within de Bowers before the end of the race. And now go around the left-hander and to now go down a hill towards the uh, the corner that has any, it's not even class of the corner really so it's just a little turn but this is class of the corner let's turn six and seven is Lopez getting out of the corners a lot better than what the barrel says I wouldn't be surprised if that is what how he's getting onto the bounce at the moment the only retirement of course being Johnson a shame really was after taking pole uh, pretty much uh, just did not have the pace the yeah, racing then just to make matters worse spun off and beached it down at turn four just as Garmba was making an overtake on him there for P2. But as we come around the final few corners, looks like the Bowers has just got enough of a gap to keep Lopez back. Lopez, I think if he had probably like a couple more laps, maybe even more on that, I honestly think he could have got Bruno. But it is too late anyway, because coming around the final three corners then comes Bruno de Bowers. He has done a fabulous race, and he's going to make it two out of two. Coming around the final corner, and Bruno de Bowers is going to win here in Spain, making it two out of two. Congratulations to him. A fully deserved victory from the Brazilian after a long hard battle with Johnson towards the beginning. He finally took the lead and wins the race. It is Lopez second and they think it was Gar Garba actually dropped down to fifth. Let's not forget. And uh, well, that's that really. As the rest of the finishers come across the line, it's Glazebrook. He's just going to hold off his uh, his teammate to round off the top eight. So he finally gets points in this series. Please, I go a nice Dixon in 10th. Vadrina in 11th, Hunter is going to cross the line in 12th, Juhas was the one who finished third with Fitzwater in 4th and Gamba in 5th as uh, there you go then, so 13th goes to Gomez there, 14th goes to Machula as it's William Brock who's going to cross the line in 15th is the American, DeRosa 6th and sad, uh, I can't, so he's in 6th place there as a result, Roush 16th as we even have a yellow flag down at turn 1, I don't know if anybody pulled off on the side of the track. Uh, doing the parade lap? No. Oh no! Somebody actually. Please, I got a crash on the for me on the on the parade lap. So did somebody hit the back of him there? That's how I up there. So please, I got a taking that normally there. And uh, well, Dixon. Whoa. Okay, that was a little bit away from Dixon there. Looks like he just ran into the back of him there, carrying a little bit too much speed on the parade lap. And uh, well, uh, from the way he's going really slowly there, I wonder if he's feeling a little bit of guilt from that. But uh, I wonder if the stewards will be having a look at that one on the parade lap but uh, yeah quite a weird incident there you'd have to say he's now Duncan crosses the line in 18 but disappointing race for the American after qualifying last just did not have any pace around this track whatsoever and it's Banks who's going to cross the line in 19th had a battle with Duncan but just after the spin dropped back and now Dyer crosses the line in 20th and we wait for Greenwood who's the final race here a disappointment for him after a strong weekend in Istanbul he's going to cross the line in 21st position and there you have it then Bruno de Bauhaus makes it 2 out of 2 here today and increases his lead in the championship I wonder if you'll consider him now as a title favourite and potentially being the top class next season in the future perhaps um, that made no sense whatsoever but uh, yeah Bruno de Bauhaus looking like a strong contender for this year's GP2 title after a lot of frustrating years so there you have it here is the results then of the race here in Spain. Bruno de Bowers won the race with Franco Lopez second, Patrick Uaz third, Zachary Fitzwater fourth, Franco Gamba fifth, De Rosa sixth, Sadlowski seventh, Glazebrook eighth, Prezai Goyla ninth, Dixon tenth, Madrina eleventh, Hunter twelfth, Gomez thirteenth, Matrulo thirteenth, fourteenth, with Brock fifteenth, Roush sixteenth, Fingai seventeenth, Duncan eighteenth, Banks nineteenth, Dyer twentieth, Greenwood twenty first, and Johnson the only retirement after beaching it at turn four after a battle with Gamba. And, uh, well, here's the fastest lap then. It went to Franco Lopez with a 1 minute 53.908. Pretty much proving how he was closing up to Bruno de Barros and possibly had the pace to beat him if there was uh, possibly one more lap or a couple of more laps uh, down the line. But uh, that's racing, I'm afraid, as we look through the rest of the fastest laps. And um, as you can see there, who was the slowest out of everybody today? And it was David Greenwood showing what a disappointing weekend it was for him as a whole. Just did not find any pace. But here is the Drivers' Championship then. After two rounds, Bruno de Barros leads the championship by 12 points in front of a tie between Lopez and Garma. Fingai third, with has four, Fitzwater fifth, Greenwood tied with him in seventh. Sorry, and then it is Dixon eighth, Duncan ninth, De Rosa tenth, Vedrino eleventh, Sadlowski twelfth, 
Uh, Breeze Aguilla 13th, Johnson 14th, Glacier 15th, Dyer 16th. The driver's still yet to score. Banks, Hunter, Roush, Gomez, Machulo, and Brock. So, fourth for Finn Guy. Um, and yeah, as the rest go down. So, there you have it, then, guys. That has been it then for the second race of the GP2 Championship of 2011. It's been uh, quite an interesting race with the wet conditions. Not as many retirements as I was expecting, but still, it had its moments here and there. I don't think it was as good as this damn ball, but still, it was an okay race. So there you have it then, guys. That has been it. We will see you guys then next weekend. I 